record. So now it is recorded and we'll begin with uh, the, uh, today's topic. So today's topic is uh, uh, again mechanical waves. We uh, have discussed this uh, last week, but uh, something can be uh, repeated again. And uh, we have discussed that mechanical waves are vibrational disturbance that travel through the material medium. Uh, waves can be هو لا لا ما حدش بيسمعه اكتر وكانت هي كانت هي Can you hear me now? Yes, yes, we can. Yeah. Right, so, so, I don't know, it uh, happens uh, you, well, often, so I don't know why. And, and let me show you some uh, video. Uh, I didn't find it, uh, its origin in YouTube. So I'll show it to you from my computer and uh, wait a second. Uh, it is uh, taken from YouTube, but it was uh, not this year, so I don't remember. In a longitudinal wave, the disturbance that makes up the wave is along the direction the wave travels. Longitudinal waves are also referred to as compression waves. In a transverse wave, the disturbance that makes up the wave is perpendicular to the direction in which the wave travels. In a longitudinal wave, the disturbance that makes up the wave is along the direction. Well, it's uh, second repetition. So, let just continue with my uh, PDF file of lectures. So this uh, short video sh showed the demonstration, uh, the difference between uh, longitudinal and transverse waves. And uh, was uh, it possible to see the video? Could you tell me please? I didn't hear the answer. Uh, can someone tell me was everything okay with video when it was shown? Yeah, yeah. So, okay, so next uh, time we'll try to see, uh, see the video from YouTube. And again, uh, we'll discuss briefly the uh, appearance of standing waves. Uh, we uh, have some uh, exercise in our um, laboratory devices, so in uh, our set of laboratories, our set of exercises. We have the exercise of uh, studying resonance on a string. On the other, in other words, uh, we can say that uh, this exercise studies standing waves on the string. 
And uh, here is a short discussion how standing waves appear and uh, what is the difference between standing wave and transverse waves. Uh, the transverse wave uh, is a uh, wave which can be described by uh, um, form by formula one or some other formula with uh, some function of argument kx minus uh, omega t. It uh, is not necessary to have sine function here. Um, it can be some other thing, but uh, if we want to discuss transverse wave, then the argument should look like this. And this is uh, for one dimensional case. If we discuss a three dimensional case, then uh, we should uh, discuss shape of the wave. There are plane waves, spherical waves. Uh, they have some different arguments here, but in simplest one di dimensional case, we have we should have kx minus omega t. Another variant of transverse wave is a function of kx plus omega t. And the difference between these two waves is the direction of uh, transmission. In case of minus sign, the uh, wave goes to the positive x because with increase of t, the point where the phase of sine function is the same uh, moves Plus. moves to the right. Well, and we have discussed already that. Um, let me see what you have in the chat. Well, only uh, okay, everything's okay. Uh, so we have discussed that there are uh, several parameters. So wave, which is um, omega frequency, which is a amplitude. And one new thing uh, is k, which is uh, a wave um, number. And this wave number k is related to wavelength through the relation uh, k equals two pi by lambda. So k is inversely proportional to the wavelength. Well, and uh, one important thing concerning the traveling waves is the uh, ratio between uh, velocity, uh, and lambda uh, wavelength, and frequency f. So uh, the ratio is very simple. Uh, the velocity is lambda multiplied on f. Uh, now let us discuss second I cannot okay uh, okay let us discuss the appearance of standing waves if we have two uh, uh, traveling waves with the same uh, type uh, uh, both uh, we assume they are both harmonical waves which means they are discussed by a sine function or cosine function and it's uh, by some uh, choosing of the initial phase, we can uh, make both of them depending on sign. And we assume that the amplitudes are equal. A1 equal, equals A2. So we have two waves uh, traveling in opposite direction. What we really have if they are combined together? Uh, let us see. We uh, can use this uh, trigonometric identity. So the sum of two sine function can be represented as uh, product of sine of the angle alpha plus beta divided by two multiplied on cosine. So by this equation, we have a total uh, displacement will be uh, y1 plus y2, and it will be 2a sine kx and cosine omega t. In contrast to initial uh, uh, formula, here we have a product of two functions. One of them depends on 
uh, x only and does not depend on t. Another one depends on t and does not depend on x. It means uh, we have oscillations at every point with the cosine uh, low and the amplitude of oscillation uh, is different at different points of space. It is defined by sine kx. On the other hand, uh, at every given moment, the shape of the string is defined by this sine uh, function. And uh, we can see that uh, this sine function has zeros at some point. And one of the uh, important thing for appearance of standing wave on a string is the um, boundary conditions that should be satisfied by the function. Um, usually boundary conditions is uh, zero displacement of edges of the string because they are fixed, so uh, they cannot move. That's why the displacement is zero here. And uh, this boundary condition is satisfied only if k has some special values. Uh, the values should uh, be found from the equation kl equal pi n. And uh, in this case, sine becomes zero. So from these equations, we can find the ratio between the length of the string and the wavelength of standing wave lambda. So we can see that lambda, uh, that uh, the um, lambda should satisfy equation seven, which means the length of the string should be equal to some integer number of half uh, wavelengths, semi-wavelengths. And this is exactly what we can see on the picture. Uh, so the longest wave which can uh, present on the uh, string is two times, has the wavelength two times larger than string itself. And uh, this wave corresponds to the smallest frequency which is possible uh, for standing waves on the string, of the smallest resonance frequency. And all the other waves are uh, this first wave divided by some integer number. If we remember that the, uh, the, the speed of wave does not depend on its frequency strongly, uh, normally, for example, for sound, this dependence is very low, so we can assume that uh, V is constant. Then we can see that F uh, is uh, inversely proportional to lambda in case of V constant. And if lambda decreases, F increases. So the uh, resonance frequencies will be increasing with the number of resonance and they uh, will increase uh, proportional to the first resonance uh, frequency F1 and uh, the coefficient of proportionality is integer number. So it will be two, three, four and so on. That's why we can see a set of resonance frequencies and they are separated with equal distance on the uh, frequency scales. Uh, if we discuss the resonance in a not one dimensional but in two dimensional system, for example, like a mem membrane of drum or um, some other uh, surface which oscillates then uh, the difference, uh, there is some difference between one dimensional case and two dimensional case. And the uh, most important uh, difference is that we have uh, non-equidistant frequencies and we have some 
special values for uh, frequencies. This set of frequencies is unique for each shape of membrane. It depends on the shape of membrane. And the same is true for three-dimensional uh, resonance in three-dimensional objects. For example, resonance on inside a room or inside uh, some uh, device, uh, resonance of acoustic waves. Uh, the set of frequencies is um, infinite uh, and <coughs> the uh, frequencies are not equidistant. Well, uh, so this phenomenon is studied in one of our laboratories. Let us uh, go further. Uh, let us discuss the most important for medicine, uh, the most important type of waves. Um, actually, I cannot say it is, is the most important because there are many important waves for us. And uh, uh, electromagnetic waves, which, are, uh, which is, is light, they are also very important. In the, I would say they are even more important for us than sound one. But uh, one of the most important type of waves for us is mechanical waves, which are called sound. And uh, let me see what we have in chat. Oh, everything is okay here. <laughs> Uh, so, sound is a vibration that propagates uh, the mechanical waves of pressure and displacement through a medium. Uh, sound waves are uh, pressure waves traveling in elastic medium, uh, fluid or solid. And in solid, uh, the waves can be transverse waves. And uh, in all the other mediums, including solids too, the uh, longitudinal waves are possible. So, uh, we cannot uh, obtain the transverse waves in uh, fluids, in liquids or gases, but uh, longitudinal waves can appear in every type of medium. And Right, so uh, we can write the um, equation for variations of pressure and variations of displacement of molecules in the sound wave. Uh, uh, you can see that again, I'm uh, writing the one dimensional equations but actually, uh, this uh, wait a second. actually uh, the, um, the wave uh, is uh, transmitted in a three-dimensional space, but there are some cases when uh, the um, one-dimensional equation. Uh, is suitable for this. Uh, it is the case when uh, the parameters of wave does not depend on uh, two uh, coordinates on uh, y and z. Uh, in this case, we can call this type of wave as plane wave because the surface of equal phase is a plane. Well, please uh, let me uh, spend some time for uh, closing the window in just a second. Well, now I think it's better seen. Uh, so, uh, um, uh, the equations for uh, 
pressure variations and displacement uh, are given by different um, harmonic functions, sine and cosine, which means that the uh, variations of uh, displacement and pressure are shifted uh, for a half of period one uh, according to another. And uh, points of maximum displacement correspond to points of zero pressure. Uh, that is why we have sine in one equation and cosine in another one. And uh, uh, one important thing is uh, the velocity. The velocity as you remember, uh, is uh, a product of wavelengths on the uh, frequency. And we can uh, record it also as a uh, ratio of uh, omega by k. So uh, velocity equals to frequency divided by k and uh, frequency omega, circular frequency. So it is uh, one definition of velocity. Another one uh, came from the um, uh, equations of motion for the molecules. And it uh, says that the velocity can be found by this formula, where uh, B is the so-called bulk models. And uh, this uh, quantity describes elastic properties of uh, some medium, uh, its stiffness. So the um, more difficult to um, uh, to default to change the form uh, to, for example, uh, straight or shrink the medium, the larger value of B. And uh, the more dense medium, rho is density of medium, the smaller value of V. And uh, by this equation, one can uh, estimate the uh, frequency, the velocity of sound in gases, for example, and it is interesting that in gases, it does not depend on pressure at given temperature. So if temperature is fixed, then the uh, uh, velocity of sound does not depend on uh, pressure. And uh, uh, in air, the speed of sound uh, is about uh, 330 or 340 meters per second. It is uh, quite a big speed compared to, for example, speed of running man which is about uh, 10 uh, meters per second for the best runners. And um, you see the speed of sound is about 30 times larger. And uh, if we compare this speed with the speed of plane, uh, they are of the same order. Some, you know, some plane uh, can exceed this speed, uh, which is, uh, mostly military planes, uh, so they can travel with the speed which is higher than speed of sound. And uh, if we compare the speed with speed of light, of course, speed of sound is much uh, smaller than speed of light. Speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. So we can say 300 million meters per second compared to 300 only. So it is about a million times uh, larger than the speed of uh, sound. And uh, speed of sound can be measured by some simple experiments. And uh, uh, for example, during the uh, sound, uh, uh, everyone can see the difference between time of uh, appearance of, uh, well, uh, light flash and uh, sound of thunder. 
there is a time interval of, of a few seconds. And it depends on the distance from the sender, uh, thunder, and uh, the, the position of uh, observer. Well, so uh, the, sound, the speed of sound in the air is about uh, 300 meters uh, per second. And in liquids, especially in water, in water it is about 1,000 meters per second, so it is about three times larger. And uh, there is a uh, law that when we have a surface uh, which separates two mediums with different speed of waves, then there is a reflection of waves on the surface. That's why uh, waves are reflected from uh, the surface of water, for example, they are reflected from the glass, because the speed of light in glass is also larger than in the air. And um, uh, this reflection uh, can be used for uh, sound insulation, for example. On the other hand, sometimes when it is necessary to transmit the energy of sound wave, this reflection could be uh, a bad thing because most of energy can be reflected due to the difference of uh, speeds of sound in different media. Well, now let us uh, discuss some uh, properties of sound, which are uh, uh, sensed with our uh, ear and um, interpreted with our brain. So uh, there are, uh, for us there are two basic uh, characteristics of sound, which is uh, sound loudness and sound pitch. Uh, uh, so, uh, if we have a, not mm, a mm, single uh, frequency, then uh, we can say about tonal uh, qualities or timbre of the sound. These are so-called subjective characteristics because they depend on the observer properties. Uh, it is interpretation by a human. And uh, these characteristics are based on uh, some objective parameters, uh, which presence uh, independently of observer, uh, and they can be described by some physical quantities. Those quantities are frequency, uh, wavelengths, intensity, and other parameters. Uh, first, let's just discuss uh, frequency. Uh, we cannot hear uh, all the uh, mechanical vibrations, but the range of frequencies we are able to hear is very uh, large. We can uh, hear uh, sounds with frequencies uh, from 20 to 20 sounds of hertz, so 1,000 times uh, difference between the smallest and the highest frequency. And uh, from this, uh, from the relation between the wavelengths and frequency, we can think that uh, wavelengths of audible sound changes from a few centimeters to many meters. Uh, the smallest is 20, about 20 hertz, so it is about uh, 15 meters wavelength. And uh, the frequency is uh, directly related to audible uh, sensation uh, parameter, uh, which is called pitch. So the pitch of sound is our audible sensation uh, corresponding most closely to frequency. Increasing frequency uh, is interpreted as increasing of pitch. And uh, the next parameter is intensity. Uh, I said that uh, frequency can change uh, in the range of 1,000 times. But if we discuss 
uh, intensity, its range is much more larger. So the intensity of sound is measured in units uh, watch per square meter or joule per second per square meter. And intensity is proportional to uh, squared uh, amplitude of pressure. Uh, on the other hand, we can say that it is proportional to the squared amplitude of displacement. And the uh, audible sensation of intensity is loudness. So loudness is most closely related to intensity. But in contrast to um, our other uh, type of sensitivity, we cannot say that loudness is directly proportional to the intensity. Uh, let us see how uh, this uh, relation between uh, intensity and loudness can be uh, uh, stated. So sound intensity varies uh, over an enormous range. Uh, the least intense uh, sound which can be heard by a human is called the threshold of hearing and it is about 10 to power minus 12 watts per meter. And the most intense sound which is called threshold of pain is about 1 watt per meter. So the difference is 12 orders. Uh, it is very, very big uh, uh, range. And of course, if we try to use a linear scale in this uh, very big range, then we were unable to see the smallest, uh, uh, the smallest sound uh, in comparison with the highest intensity. That's why uh, it would be useful to use a logarithmic scale instead of uh, linear scale. And that is exactly what we uh, have in our uh, bodies. Uh, so the, uh, our sense of sound is organized so that uh, uh, we, uh, our sensation of uh, loudness uh, depends uh, nearly logarithmically to sound uh, intensity. Uh, and the useful scale of intensity level is the decibel scale, which is called uh, in honor of uh, Alexander Graham Bale, uh, the scientist who studied sound. And uh, one bell means change in change in difference in ten times. It can be applied not only to sound; it can be applied to any quantity. So uh, if some quantity is changed uh, for 10 times, we can say is increased in 10 times, we can say that it increased for one bell. And uh, a chance uh, of this increasing is called decibel. It is uh, approximately uh, increasing for uh, 10 or 9 percent. So if something increased uh, for 10%, we can say it increased for one decibel. Actually, 9% is closer to the value of increasing. And it is a uh, relative increasing, so uh, it does not depend on uh, what we are uh, discuss, what uh, kind of quantity we are studying. And uh, this can be represented by the formula. So B can be considered, uh, is called intensity level, and it can be considered as interpretation of loudness. And uh, by this formula, we can see that we have a decimal logarithm of uh, ratio of intensities, uh, where I know is. Uh, a reference intensity, which is usually taken as threshold of hearing, the smallest intensity which human ear 
is able to uh, recognize. And um, actually this I0 depends on frequency. So uh, it is, uh, it has the lowest value for uh, the best here and frequency it is about one hertz, uh, one uh, kilohertz, about 1000 hertz. And it decreases to the edges of uh, frequency range, for example, for uh, 20 hertz, it will be much larger. I said it decreases, it actually increases. Um, so uh, the threshold increases, it means our sensitivity decreases. Uh, so we have the maximal sensitivity at uh, about 1000 hertz. And with increase of frequency or decrease of frequency, this sensitivity uh, goes down. That uh, means I0 increases. And um, uh, the most uh, intense sound which can be hearing is about 10 to power 12 times larger. So its intensity by this formula will be uh, 120 decibels because the ratio gives us 10 to power 12. When we take logarithms, we obtain 12. And when we multiply it on 10, we have once, uh, 120 decibels. So this is the uh, range of loudness in uh, decibel scale. So the loudness changes from zero to 120 decibels. And you probably know that uh, the sound of about 60 or 70 decibel is normal for, for example, vacuum cleaner, uh, 70 decibels. And uh, uh, the 120 decibels, it's a sound of a um, a plane which goes very close to the uh, person. Uh, it's uh, it's out, uh, which can be here outside of plane, of course, because inside we have a, uh, um, some sound insulation. Well, now. Uh, one of the most important example of sound is voice. We use speech for uh, uh, exchange of information. That's why it is very important. And it is uh, interesting how the sound appears in our uh, larynx and in our uh, uh, sound production system. It contains not only larynx, it contains larynx, vocal cords, mouth, uh, tongue, and uh, all of this part actually is used during the speech. And now, first, the sound begins uh, in the, uh, its production begins with vocal cords. When we breathe in, uh, the air uh, flows um, without any obstacle uh, through the vocal cords. This uh, slit is wide uh, here. And when we speak, uh, these uh, cords become tangent. They are closed and uh, the air uh, goes uh, with um, uh, some uh, oscillations uh, with some vibrations. Well, let me uh, try to show you uh, some video. Oh, wait a second. I will try to find it on YouTube. So it is here. Well, we'll just try to Thank you. 
Well, uh, you uh, will be able to see this video again because uh, I have uh, sent you the uh, links. And uh, tell me, please, uh, were you able to hear uh, the sound during the video demonstration? Can ever anybody tell me? So Ibrahim, could you tell me uh, what's the sound uh, hearing? Uh, is, was it possible to hear the sound? In the video? In the video, sound. yes. No. Sound not very clearly. So there was no sound during the video, yes? Yes. Yes. Aha, uh -huh. it is not so good then. Uh, well, let me see what can be. And uh, when I, uh, for example, in this. Longitudinal waves are also referred to as compression waves. So uh, you can hear sound in this video, yes? Yes, Doctor. But well, not, no. but uh, when it was the video from YouTube, you were unable to hear anything. Well, let me try to uh, start this. So do you hear the sound now? I mean, not right now, but when I started the video, were you able to hear the sound? Doctor, your sound or the sound of uh, the device? The, uh, the device, the, the sound of no. video. No. No, the, no your only sound. Only me, so you can hear only me. Yes. Yeah, uh, I see, I see. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, well, let me try to. Maybe it can be found here. Well, not for the moment, I think I... Uh, I will try to uh, find the way next time. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe I'll try to explain myself something with these videos. Uh, once again, I'll just start this. So. Oh, this is larynx no we can't hear the i understand uh, that you don't hear that sound but you hear me yes yes we hear you No, oh, I cannot uh, comment it uh, in real time. So uh, let's just continue with my presentation. And, uh, and uh, once again, uh, you have seen this video uh, without uh, sound, but anyway, uh, you were able to see uh, the mechanism of formation of vibrations. But um, I think it is a simplified model of this mechanism because uh, the uh, vocal cords, uh, when they are closed um, together, they uh, uh, cannot um, close and open with such a high 
frequency which is necessary for formation of uh, sound because they are wet they are not a uh, uh, dry solid objects that's why the speed of the uh, detachment is uh, limited by the uh, properties of liquid it is limited by the uh, surface tension and that's why they cannot open uh, very quick uh, they cannot open and close uh, for example one thousand times per second and uh, that is why i think that um, the model described in this video is uh, too simplified the real uh, the real well, um, mechanisms of formation of sound is similar to uh, the mechanisms of formation of sound in the whistle for example in whistle kettle uh, there there is a some uh, cavity some uh, volume inside which uh, the sound can resonate and uh, if it comes in with some uh, wait a second let me uh, uh, let me clean uh, so um uh, so the um uh, mechanism of uh, sound formation uh, is uh, full and the um, beam of air comes into the larynx and resonate in this uh Learning the uh, oscillation appears because the um, flow uh, crosses itself, and uh, that's why when it crosses itself, it uh, sometimes goes, for example, uh, um, right left, uh, or uh, other time uh, it goes uh, up down like this and that's why uh, that leads to appearance of oscillations and those oscillations can be um, high speed oscillations and the shape of um, uh, larynx uh, changes the uh, resonance frequencies of the sound that's why we can produce uh, sound with different uh, letters, for example, letter uh, uh, A, uh, sounds R, U, O, they are different by its, their spectral, uh, spectral picture, their spectral dependence. The, they differ uh, by the number of uh, frequencies which are included in the spectrum. And uh, so this is how we produce our speech. So well, important things are uh, vocal cords and larynx. So vocal cords is necessary to form the jet of uh, air because if there is no jet, there is no uh, oscillations. And now another uh, important thing, another important uh, mechanism is uh, mechanism of hearing, so our audible sensation. And uh, here is a picture which describes the uh, structure of human ear. You can see there are three uh, small bones inside the uh, so-called inner ear and uh, inner ear is uh, connected to the uh, nozzle mm, mm, cavities inside our nose. Uh, so they are con uh, so inner ear is connected to them by the eustachian tube. 
it is very interesting that we have uh, so long tube from nose to ear uh, and it needs only for um, to uh, make air to come inside inner ear. And inside the cavity, we have three small bones. When uh, the sound comes inside, it first acts on the tympanic membrane, or also called eardrum, which makes the eardrum to oscillate. Then the oscillations from the eardrum are uh, going to three small bones. And those bones, uh, plays a role of a lever. Uh, they change the force with which uh, they uh, are acting on the cochlea. So uh, the force uh, or with which eardrum acts on the uh, first uh, bone, which is called mevelus, uh, mevelus. So uh, they, uh, those forces are smaller than forces which are produced by stapes, uh, which is contacted to the cochlea. And uh, this increase of force is necessary for some reason. Uh, of course, there is no, uh, increasing power of sound. Uh, you probably know that simple mechanisms like a lever cannot change the work done by force. They can change force, they can increase it or decrease it, but simultaneously the displacement is changed and the larger force, the smaller displacement. So a teardrum, we have oscillations with small force and big displacement. At the cochlea, it tapes, we have oscillations with uh, small uh, displacement, but uh, much larger force. And let us try to watch one uh, more video again. Um, unfortunately, it will be without uh, sound, but I recommend you to see this video again later because uh, it is uh, illustrated with some uh, uh, some very uh, interesting sounds. So uh, now I have uh, turned off my sound too. Uh, no. So uh, this is describing the structure of ear and this is uh, the ear dream uh, eardrum or, um, or um, uh, sound membrane. So, um, this is tympanic membrane from the other side and it is connected to the mellows. And the second one is incus and stapes. So the uh, vibrations are transmitted from tympanic membrane to other bones. And here are the axis of rotation of these three bones. The axis appears because of uh, muscles, they are connected to muscles, they don't uh, they are not uh, flying in free space, they are connected to some, some ligament. Uh, other ligaments which are uh, removed in this uh, video for a better scene of um, bones Again, malus, incus, and stapes. And then stapes is connected to cochlea. 
so this is cochlea. This is actually our organ of uh, audio sensation. So the vibration is sent by uh, motion back and forth of steppes and you see uh, it uh, leads to um, some wave inside cochlea which goes out in this place so wave goes through the cochlea and since the volume should be conserved it goes out here now uh, uh, this is picture illustrates how vibrations goes in and out of the cochlea. So, uh, And here, uh, where pink color is uh, cochlear duct. So this is the organ which uh, 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 is responsible for our hearing. When the sound goes inside cochlear, the wave of incoming sound makes this uh, structure to vibrate and uh, it transmits the uh, uh, oscillation th through this part and this part is uh, the part where we generate the nerve pulses. Uh, the next picture uh, describes how each so this uh, all this is called organ of corti and these are some special type of cells which generates nerve pulse when they are mm, deformed. So they are uh, triggered, they are turned on when uh, the deformation comes. Uh, it is important that a sound of different frequency uh, makes the vibration uh, at different areas of cochlea. It was interesting for me that uh, the uh, initial part of cochlea is responsible for uh, uh, high frequencies and uh, the uh, long, uh, longest distance from the from the steepest part, this part where the uh, apex of cochlea is, is responsible for low frequencies. And again, I recommend you to see this video, this special video uh, with sound because it is, uh, um, it has very uh, nice uh, sound um, track. Um, and uh, it describes more than I was able to describe you. Well, let's just go back. So, uh, once again, I'd like to tell you one important thing about these three bones and about the structure of here. Uh, if we look at the structure, it seems to be uh, Mm, very complicated and um, on the first view uh, it is uh, unclear why there is uh, requires such a complicated um, structure because all we need is to up, um, uh, absorb sound and then transmit the vibrations into the uh, no pulses. It is done by uh, organ of corti inside cochlea. But uh, why do we need this? Why do we need change the 
force. Uh, it does not change the energy. Uh, energy cannot be changed by simple mechanisms. So it seems to be uh, not useful mechanism because uh, if the ear were simply, if the eardrum was directly connected to the cochlea, then we wouldn't need this uh, inner uh, ear. We wouldn't need eustachian tube uh, and we uh, would be uh, much safer against some uh, infections which can uh, come to the eustachian tube uh, from our nose. So this seems to be uh, not useful uh, structure. I mean, uh, in the ear. But actually, everything has uh, its reason. And these three bones and this uh, cavity are very important. Uh, three bones are necessary because the air comes to our ear from, uh, I'm sorry, the sound comes to our ear from the air. And you remember that speed of sound in the air is about three times smaller than speed of sound in liquids in the water. And cochlea, of course, it is filled with liquid. So the speed of sound inside cochlea is much larger than in the air. And if we had the membrane directly connected to cochlea, then we would have a, a strong uh, reflection of sound most of sound energy would be reflected and our ear would be not as effective as it is now. So to prevent this reflection, we need to transmit sound, we need to transmit vibrations from uh, low density uh, medium, which is sound, to high density medium, which is, uh, which is uh, water or actually some uh, organic uh, liquid. And for this reason, we need to decrease displacement because at the same um, frequency, the displacement of uh, molecules is much uh, smaller inside liquids and uh, much larger inside gases. On the other hand, we need to increase the uh, pressure variations because pressure variations are larger in liquids. And that is exactly what these three bones done. Uh, they, they are doing, they are increasing uh, pressure and decreasing uh, displacement. The displacement becomes smaller and pressure oscillations becomes larger. So this uh, level mechanism allows us to uh, absorb all the sound energy and uh, it allows us to do it with very high efficiency. So most of sound which comes to eardrum is transmitted to the cochlea. That's why we don't need to have a large eardrum, for example. Uh, we uh, don't need uh, to increase the uh, size of cochlea. So everything works very well and uh, this mechanism is very uh, nice uh, solution of the problem. So to transmit the uh, sound energy from air to liquid, we use some solid level mechanism consist of, uh, consisting of three bonds. Well, next uh, question I'd like to discuss briefly is uh, the so-called Doppler effect. So uh, this Doppler effect is a, a change in frequency of wave for observer moving relative to the, the source. And it uh, can be uh, seen in different uh, wave processes. So it is not only for sound waves, um, but uh, for sound waves, uh, it can be clearly uh, hearing during uh, the car which goes uh, near the person standing uh, on the road. 
if someone stands on the road, then incoming car uh, has the higher frequency uh, sound and outgoing uh, has uh, lower frequency sounds, so which sound like this. So initially the pitch is high uh, and uh, finally it is low. And uh, you will be able to see the other uh, video. I will not uh, start it for you uh, now because without sound, it is not interesting. So uh, there are two more videos here. I think you will be able to see it yourself later. And if it is necessary, I can uh, send once again, sorry, uh, the uh, file with these links. Uh, also, this file can be found at my um, uh, folder with all the files. So, uh, I would probably better send you once again the file with, uh, which is called some useful links. So wait a second. Um, sorry. So we have here chat and uh, let me send it once again. F so this file is called some useful links. And uh, let us see what it contains. The uh, second link here is the link to the uh, folder which contains uh, textbook uh, lectures and again it contains the file which is called uh, links to videos for lecture three. Wait a second. Oops, I still don't see. And uh, uh, in this file, which is called links to videos for lecture three, there are two more videos we didn't see. Uh, and actually I recommend you to see once again the second video which I have uh, shown you with my uh, uh, comments, but it is better to see the original sound. Uh, another two videos is Doppler effect and uh, fundamentals of ultrasound. And uh, now again to the Doppler effect. So it leads to change in frequency of sound and it is used in medicine in the uh, uh, ultrasound diagnostic tool. So uh, let us discuss briefly how ultrasound imaging can be created, how ultrasound image can be created and how it works ultrasound imaging. So uh, it is technique uh, based on the application of ultrasound and uh, it uh, uses um, oops, I have no, uh, well, let me start anyway the video because I'll be able to show you some uh, principles of ultrasound imaging here. So uh, the sound waves are sent from uh, the, um, the device. So they are emitted by this emitter and then uh, air holes. So they are reflected by some bodies inside the uh, human body by some tissues. So different tissues has different uh, speed of propagation of sound. That's why at the uh, border of different tissues, there is a reflection of waves. So uh, uh, reflected waves or echoed waves 
are uh, absorbed by the same device, which includes both uh, the uh, generator of waves and the absor uh, uh, absorbing device. Uh, let us see how this is. So they are based also called piezoelectric effect. There are uh, several piezoelectric elements. So you can see in this video that the same piezoelectric elements uses, uh, they uh, uh, play the role of generator and uh, signal sensor at the same time. So first they uh, obtain an electric pulse, uh, due to electric pulse they start vibrating and they create a uh, sound wave, ultrasound wave actually. These ultrasound waves goes inside the human body, then it is reflected and echoed waves uh, comes back into the uh, device. Then they uh, come to piezoelectric elements. At this moment, there is no uh, extra electric uh, signal on the element and uh, the uh, echoed waves um, starts to uh, make to vibrate there. Uh, piezo elements. That's why vibrations, uh, the vibrations um, produce electric signals and those electric signals are uh, obtained by the system of the device. So uh, the uh, electric signal is generated and the time of uh, echo, so uh, the time which is necessary for sound to come uh, to the uh, tissue and come back, uh, this time uh, depends on the deepness of the tissue of some uh, um, part of body which um, produces this echo. So um, by knowing the time we are able to find the distance to the object. By measuring the intensity, we are able to measure uh, the so-called um, uh, sound density of the tissue. And then uh, we can uh, reconstruct the whole picture of uh, the structures inside our body. Well, uh, I think you will see this video yourself with the sound uh, sometime later. So let me tell you some other words about ultrasound. And uh, the advantages of this ultrasound imaging, of course, is that it uh, produces absolutely no harm to the human body. So this is uh, the most safe uh, technique of uh, looking inside our body. And the disadvantage is that sometimes it is un impossible to see some important things inside because uh, ultrasound is not, uh, some structures are not contrast to ultrasound. And um, Another reason is that sometimes uh, the structures are, um, they create a so-called sound shadows. For example, if we have a, a gaze uh, field cavities inside, then uh, ultrasound doesn't go through uh, those cavities well. So uh, for example, it uh, cannot uh, go well through our lungs. Uh, gases is uh, something which uh, absorbs, uh, which uh, uh, stops the transmission of 
sound. That's why we cannot see through gazes in our bodies. That's why uh, sometimes we cannot see what we are interested in because it is, uh, uh, well, hidden by some gaze uh, cavities. Well, and uh, concerning to uh, the um, Doppler effect, I told you already that it, uh, it is change in frequencies uh, of sound uh, or other wave when the uh, observer moves uh, in relation to the source of sound. And in case of ultrasound imaging, the source of uh, echo is some structure inside our body. And uh, as this structure, we can consider uh, blood flowing inside. And of course, blood is not uh, very uh, contrast in uh, ultrasound image normally, but uh, when we consider Doppler effect, blood is the only moving object or heart itself and blood. Uh, there are only moving objects inside and they it means they are the only objects which will change the frequency of echo uh, wave. And by this change of frequency, even uh, if the signal is small, but it comes on different frequencies, that's why we can easily detect it. Uh, so this uh, signal can be well separated from other signals, uh, even if this signal is very small in amplitude, because uh, there is a way to separate signals with different frequencies. So uh, by obtaining the signal at different frequencies, we are able to uh, see moving uh, only moving objects inside and uh, next thing is we are able to measure speed of each part of the object. We can uh, show it is a color picture. False colors are widely used in various imaging devices. And for example, in case of ultrasound imaging, uh, false colors can represent as the velocity of uh, different objects inside. And uh, uh, as I shall, uh, as I told you, only moving objects is blood, so it uh, allows us to see the different uh, velocities of blood flow. So this is very useful tool in uh, study of blood vessels and especially in study of uh, our heart. So. Uh, Ultrasound imaging with Doppler uh, effect allows us to obtain very uh, useful information about uh, what blood flow inside heart. Well, so uh, once again, I recommend you to download the uh, two files with links and to watch all the videos from the uh, second file. It will take you about 20 minutes. So uh, that is all from me for you today. Uh, this is a picture of ultrasound machines. These are questions. And uh, in a month we will have uh, our first uh, test. Uh, so the uh, just for the questions in chest will not be uh, exactly questions uh, which I show you here because um, you will be able to pass just probably it uh, those conditions when we, you are able to see the answers. So that's why I will change some uh, some form of questions, but the uh, content of questions uh, at the test will be the same as you have in these questions. Well, and now uh, that's all 
I'd like to tell you today. Do you have any questions? No, thank you. Thank you, doctor, thank you. Uh, you uh, said uh, you need a PDF of notes. So uh, you mean uh, PDF with questions, but uh, if you look at the folder, uh, the link for the folder presence in the file I have already sent you today. So the second link there is for that folder. Inside the folder, there is some folder which is called questions. There uh, is a total list of questions for previous year. And uh, it is mostly the same which we have this year. And uh, my PDF with lecture also can be found in the same folder, uh, subfolder called lectures. And there you can find uh, there. Uh, well, let me show you. Uh, sorry. Uh, if we use for some useful links, then I can press this second link. So this is my uh, Google Disk, and you can see subfolder lectures, questions, textbooks. Inside subfolder lectures, you can see PDF file with different, uh, with first, second, and and in uh, the uh, once again, in the third link, you can see the playlist with uh, our uh, recorded lectures uh, with uh, file video files with our lectures. So again, now there are two files here, and today I will put uh, one more file. So uh, after today, we will have three lectures in this file. So, do you have any more questions? Doctor, this lecture uh, five or four? Uh, lecture five or four? It is lecture three. Three, okay. Well, and... Uh, so, I think there are no more questions. That, that's all. I am stop the demonstration. There are 44 persons now. Oh, it's good. And now I stop the...